Michael Levy and every week on my YouTube channel with my 13,000 plus subscribers I have at the moment I like to take my listeners on a musical adventure in time travel. People often ask me why play the liar? And this is my very first lie that I acquired on eBay in fact and the reason, well there's many reasons um, way back when I was 14 years of age, I happened to find an um, old cassette tape of the late, great David Munro. And it blew me away. I'd been to museums before, obviously, but the first time I heard his recreation of medieval music, it was like I was actually there, back in some medieval castle, chucking chicken legs over my shoulder. It was incredible. And the same year that I found this um, old um, cassette tape um, of David Munro, I happened to find um, an LP by the classical guitarists um, Julian Bream and John Williams called together. And they did this amazing arrangement of um, Pavan for a Dead Princess um, by Ravel, the two classical guitars. And in part of it, it goes into this haunting, ancient sounding mode. And it got me thinking, this is exactly what a lyre must sound like. And it took me into the early years of the 21st century before I acquired my very first lyre, which as I say was this one. And again, it inspired me to get this. Um, I've actually found a picture of this in a CD called um, Music from the Time of Jesus and Jerusalem's Second Temple. And it actually blew me away because this was a recreation of the music played by my very own, very ancient Levite ancestors in the Temple of Jerusalem. Incredible! And I, I'd played, I'd played um, klezmer fiddle before, that's um, basically traditional Jewish instrumental folk music, so I tried, let's try some klezmer on this amazing thing, it worked amazingly! And so I recorded my first album, which was King David's Lyre, Echoes of Ancient Israel. Um, but then we moved on and um, I found slightly better quality lyres. This is a lovely little handmade lyre made in the States by Marini Made Harps. And this got me interested in what ancient Greco-Roman music might have sounded like. Um, and also about the time I found this lyre, I discovered the beauty of just intonation as opposed to modern outer phase equal temperament and the beauty of simple intervals to accompany a um, melodic line. Uh, for example, this is a little few bars from one of my tracks from 2012, um, Ode to Ancient Rome. <laughs> purity of these fifths it's all you need that the modern harp is just so complicated it doesn't need to be these are beautiful so this um, took me right through until about 2014 then from my website which I then had because I was getting really interested in the lyre by then uh, my website ancientlyre.com um, specialist luthiers in um, Greece got in touch with me called Lutherios and they manufacture these wonderful things modern recreations of the ancient Greek instruments. This for example is the Kithara, the um, lyre of the um, professional music musicians of ancient Greece. Incredible thing. And also the iconic tortoiseshell lyre, the lyre of Hermes. Incredible. And each one of these is like a key to open another dimension into time and space. And I'm now going to play for you on the Kithara, one of my favourite compositions called Hymn to Zeus. And the thing with the Kithara, this, also, um, this, dem this little demonstration will hopefully show you some of the amazing features of this instrument. And all illustrations of the ancient Greek Kithara has these wonderful curvy structures. And what on earth are they? They must have some function. According to some scholars, they're actually some sort of vibrato mechanism. And Lutherios, in their recreation 
for this instrument. They can't reconstruct it because no actual original ancient Greek cathar has ever been found. But in their recreation of it, they've actually tried to emulate how this hypothetical vibrato system might actually have sounded. A little bit like this. Amazing. So um, obviously these things did have a function, so this is just one possible interpretation of the function. Maybe it was a vibrato system. But for me, it doesn't really matter if the ancient Greeks had this system or not, because I want to continue basically where the ancient Greeks left off and form a, if you like, a new ancestral music. And if you can improve on, where the, well, on the ancient Greek cathara where they left off, then so be it. <laughs> Which is great. Another improvement for the modern musician that Lutherios incorporate on their instruments, uh, which are commercially available, uh, are these um, basically modern friction pegs, but they actually look like the little tuning levers which were originally used on all the ancient instruments. Well, having said that, they do do custom design models which use all the weird little leather wraps that they had originally, which are very fiddly. But um, the whole point, the whole inspiration I have is to basically carry on where the ancients left off with a new ancestral music. So coming up is my little composition, Hymn to Zeus. Enjoy. Thank you. 